Okay, good morning, everyone. So today we are going to see how to uh, implement the uh, simplex uh, algorithm uh, with a simple uh, implementation uh, with Python. So first of all, this is my file. You're going to see that it's very short uh, and it's very practical. So this is my file. First of all, I start by importing the uh, NumPy package using um, the NumPy package, so I'm calling it NP as usual. Here I'm importing um, also from NumPy, I'm importing the, uh, the linear algebra package. And specifically, I need the inverse uh, function. So here is my main function. It's the simplex iteration, which uh, takes as arguments A, B, C, which are the, uh, the, the, the coefficients matrix in the conditions of the linear program the B, which are the right-hand sides in the conditions, and the C, which are the objective functions coefficients. It takes M, which is the number of rows or the number of conditions in my linear program, and N is the overall number of uh, uh, decision variables. So this simplex iteration function is supposed to compute the optimal solution to the linear program, which is defined as uh, the maximization, maximizing uh, CTX subject to AX equals B, where X is uh, greater or equal to zero. So here are my arguments, first of all, in details and in size. So A has M rows and N plus M uh, columns. B has is the initial vector for the uh, conditions. So it's the right-hand side vector. It has a length M. And C here are the objective coefficients, which has a length or size N plus M. Of course, we are expecting that the n plus m dimensions of x to be greater than one. And the simplex iteration returns what? It returns the uh, number of, it returns the variables, the value of the variables x. It returns the current or the optimal state of the reduced cost, we usually call RC, which has the size one by n plus m. So it's a simple line vector and it returns the final objective value or the optimal objective value of set. Uh, intermediary variables we are using in the uh, uh, matrices we're using in the uh, optimization process are the B matrix and the NB matrix. So first of all, we start with, let's go through it. So we go through the initialization. Uh, this is iteration zero when we start, Z currently is equal to zero. And I'm just initializing my vector. So X is all filled with zero XB, which defines in fact the, uh, the basic variables from X, the uh, coefficients of the basic variables, CB, the, co the non-basic variables, XN, the coefficients and the objective of the non-basic variables, the reduced cost, with all, which is also filled with zero, and the current basis, which in fact takes the indexes of the basic variables. B is the basic matrix from A, and, and B is the non-basic matrix. And currently at the beginning, the, here is the index of the entering variable, which is negative one, and the index of the leaving variable, negative one. And uh, finally, what I need is just a definition of what is your zero, the epsilon. You need to, uh, to define such that you uh, for a numerical precision. So for the, uh, also for the initialization, since we are supposing that we are starting with uh, standard form, A x equals B, so initially, and with all Bs that are positive. So I'm expecting that the initial basic solution takes all the slack variables. So at the beginning, what am I, I'm doing here is that I'm initializing uh, the, uh, the the basis to take all the base all these slack values. That's why at every i here when I go from r uh, from i equals to zero to i equals m uh, m minus one in fact it fills the basis vector here with the indexes of the of the slack values. Okay, of course, and what is left is that the you non-basic know, variables are all the, in fact, the main decision variables. So for the, the same uh, thing for the, the non-basic uh, decision variables, Cn would be equal to just to the Cis when you go from zero to n. 
Okay, so here is the the main way to to compute the uh, the, the reduced cost, which is C minus the the dot product of uh, CB, which are the coefficients of the basic variables, transposed by uh, the 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 dot product of B minus one and A. Okay, so we get C equals uh, RC equals C minus CB times B minus one A. It would go. It would give you the whole uh, line of reduced cost. And initially, before proceeding for, before running through it, the current value of the RC of the max RC max reduced cost is zero. So, using the initialization we just mentioned, when we run through the uh, the, the, the the initial vector of reduced cost. We're going to pick the maximum reduced cost, and it's going to be initialized to be the this max RC would give me the the, uh, the initial index to enter the initial index of the variable to enter the basis. Okay, so when we move on now, we'll move on to the main loop. In fact, it's a while function. It's a while loop. So we will print out just the basis, the current basis. Okay, and initially the iteration, of course, when you start. With iteration zero, so we'll print out that we are doing iteration one. We're proceeding with iteration one. And the current index to enter is here, the i we, pack, we pick it before, which corresponds to the max RC, okay? So the minimum value here I'm defining will try to pick up what is uh, the, the minimum value in the uh, ratios when you divide uh, the B's by the entries in the A's or the B's entry uh, entry column. In fact, so in fact, here I, what I need to compute is the dot product of B minus one B divided by the entries in the uh, column of the entering value. This is what I'll be doing here. So the mean value would be decreased such that I would pick the variable that I would allow me to move on within the feasible ratio. So for i equals zero to m, I'll run through all the values of the uh, current uh, basic variables. What I'm gonna do is that for i equals zero to m minus one, so that's why I define the, my range from zero to m Python. What I will do is that if the entry here in that column, when I do the uh, the the, the the, uh, when I proceed with the dot product B minus one by A, if the entry on the on the uh, ith column and uh, on the ith uh, row here, since I'm going from zero to M, uh, which corresponds to the entering variable is strictly positive. So I'm eliminating, I'm eliminating all possibilities that that entry is zero or negative. If that entry is positive, I will compute the B ratio we call, which is the uh, ratio of uh, the uh, B inverse B index I, which is that entry specifically divided by uh, B inverse A at that level, okay? So this is the B ratio which would allow me uh, to, to pick the, the minimum value and to proceed. So if the mean value, which was currently updated before at the beginning of course is one million here, I'm just initializing it to something very large, is larger than the B ratio, then I'll have to uh, define index B to be the current value of I. So I found out that there is candidate to, uh, to, to leave the basis, okay? So, once I found the candidate to leave the basis, what I need to update is the mean value, which now takes B ratio. And of course, since I'm running, I'm running through that loop from zero to M, what I pick up at the end is that uh, is the, uh, the, 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 uh, the what I would leave at the end of the loop here, I will leave with the index of the leaving variable and the minimum value reached. Okay, so if the index of the leaving variable is equal to minus one, 
Initially, it was in a strategy two minus one, so nothing happened. Then the problem is unbounded, in fact. Okay. Otherwise, you would have to update in your basis the index of uh, in the basic and in your basis the the index of the variable to read is updated with the index of the error variable to enter. In other words, the entering variable takes the position of the leaving variable. Okay, but it's not enough because what I would like to maintain here is to maintain the idea that, in fact, I'm reordering my columns in the way the initial problem was proposed. So what I'll be doing here is just a reordering of these columns in their using their current or their initial indexes. So from i equals n minus one to, 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 to zero, in fact, I'll be just decrementing and going backwards. If the value of the i uh, entry in the basis is less than the value in the i minus one, uh, uh, position in the basis, then of course I need to switch the positions. So there is a temporary variable that takes the value of the basis at i minus one. Basis i minus one will take the value of the basis at i, and basis at i will be equal to ten. Okay. So this way we updated the basis, and I will have to print, uh, print that at the end. So you see that at the end of that loop, I will have reordered my basis. Okay in a way that all the uh, basic variables and their columns are uh, in the correct positions, okay? So um, at the last stage of my main loop, so once I updated my basis, I'll have to take all the columns in A of the basic variables and put them in B. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'll have two, uh, two loops, so from I, equal to zero to m minus one, and from j equal to, from zero to m plus m, what was going to happen? If j is equal to the basis at i, then I'll take that column in a, the j columns in a, and I'll put them put it in that position, okay? So, uh, and the same thing I will do with the uh, coefficients of the basic values, I'll take the, the uh, the objective functions uh, uh, coefficients at j and I put them in the uh, coefficients of the basic values at i, okay? So I would have now what? I have updated the, uh, the basis. I have updated the, uh, the CVs. So all I need to know is to, is whether I have reached the optimal solution or not. So I'm just updating my, vector of reduced cost, which is still C minus uh, the dot product of CB transpose by B minus one A, okay? C minus CBT times B minus one A, okay? And remember, we are still in the while loop. So last thing to do is to verify that we have reached optimality or not. So I would set max RC to be equal to zero. I will run through all the um, the reduced cost. If I have reached that reduced cost, all the reduced costs are zeros uh, or, or the, uh, zero or negative. Then I have reached optimality. Otherwise, I will have to to uh, to to, uh, to to continue with in my while loop. Okay. So at the end, I update x, which is equal to b minus one b, and z, which is equal to cbt x. Okay, and at the end, of course, what this, the while loop, what it would return, it would return the, or the function would return, it would return Z, the value of the objective function, X and RC, okay? So here we go, here we have a quite, um, um, let's say, um, a serious size uh, problem where I have, in fact, 10 rows, so I have 10 conditions. And uh, initially, what I have here, I have six main variables, okay? So uh, at the end of the day, what I will have to, uh, to, uh, to, to understand is that I'm having uh, to enter this, the, all the entries in this uh, matrix. And I'll have to enter the, matrix, the entries in the B, main, the B vector and the entries in the objective 
coefficients. Okay, so we'll run quickly this uh, program to show you that it works. Okay, and this is what happens. So if you run it quickly, this is what would happen. I have reached my optimal solution in three uh, main iterations. I just go to uh, uh, the output. So let's see the output together. This, are the, is, this is the current basis. So which means that it's taken all the decision variables. Uh, the main, uh, the, the select variables are the basic variables at the beginning. For iteration one, of course, I'm expecting the B to be the identity matrix. Okay. And initially it contributed the initial B ratio, which is 1.8. And this is the basis, current basis indexes before updating. It goes from six to 15. And here, as you see, when they pick the entry variable, it leaves, it took the position here for the index to leave was three, okay? And um, I think it did it in two steps, yeah. The index to enter is four, okay? So the, uh, the decision variable, in fact, X5 entered, so that's why the index to enter is four, and took the position of the in the uh, of the in the let's say the, uh, the the eighth position. So this is in four in the eighth position, but I have to update the order of these indexes, so that's why I updated the indexes of the basic variables. So the four should be at the beginning. And then I have updated the, uh, the, the basis and I take the, uh, I'm updating the B matrix and I'm proceeding with it, okay? So at the end, this proceeds well and optimizes in fact the, uh, this tiny or uh, medium sized problem and uh, to just three iterations and that's it, okay? Hopefully everything is clear and uh, see you next time. Thank you.